Strengthen, O Lord our God, our weakness by your mercy, that we may celebrate the holy mysteries which have been given for the renewal and redemption of our weak nature, through the mercy of your beloved Son, Lord of all, now and forever. Amen. of your compassion embraces us and our souls are enlightened by the knowledge of your truth we become worthy to welcome the revelation of your beloved son from heaven there we will thank and praise you unceasingly in your crown church filled with all graces and blessings O Lord and creator of all now and forever Amen giver of life to our bodies, a good savior of our souls, and the faithful guardian of our lives. It is our duty to thank, adore, and glorify you now and forever. Amen.
Almighty and Immortal One, who delights to dwell in His saints, we implore you to turn to us with your mercy. As you always do, Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord our God, enlighten our minds that we may listen to your divine and life-giving commands. Grant us in your grace to gain love, hope, and salvation for our bodies and souls. So as to sing glory to you, Lord of all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> Moses said to the people, The Lord heard your words and was angered. And he swore, Not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land which I swore to give to your fathers, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him and to his children I will give the land upon which he has trodden, because he has wholly followed the Lord. The Lord was angry with me also on your account, and said, You also shall not go in there. Joshua the son of Nun, who stands before you, he shall enter. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, who you said would become a prey, and your children, who this day have no knowledge of good or evil, shall go in there. And to them I will give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn and journey into the wilderness in the direction of the Red Sea. The love, the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Brethren, this is a reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. Make love your aim, and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. On the other hand, he who prophesies speaks to men for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now I want you to all speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be edified. Now brethren, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how shall I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophesy or teaching? There are doubtless many different languages in the world, and none is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to the speaker, and, and the speaker a foreigner to me. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Grace and peace with you, my, my brethren. Arise in preparation and hear the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah. Shad Marani 
shamshiha karuzutham مثل طليخ غورة تير مثيل أريم دخل كبير تخمل بقيان ومير ما أذن لتي دكت الدار دخلين ومير هذا خب أذن بتلق النام باردي وبان النام ودار انت ما كل وطواثيم وبد أمر انت جاني يا جاني اتخ طواث كبير دريت شن كبير نوخ وإيخل وشتي وبسم مير طالع لا يا نقصان دهونا باذي ليل جانخ بويا طلبت منخ واني دمح ذير اختمني باواي هذا خ الى ودار تعالي خزنا ثيم وبقوا على ليلة التيرا A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. And Jesus told them a parable, saying, the, the land of a rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I told you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body, what you shall put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you by being anxious can add a moment to his span of life? If then you're not able to do a small thing as, the, as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O men of little faith? And so do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious mind. For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. We have an optimist and a pessimist in the gospel today, or we have optimists and pessimists in the gospel today, and Jesus um, criticizes them both. So let's look at these different critiques. I have all I need, this rich man in the parable, I have all I need. I have money, security, maybe I have station, I have a job. I have friends, I have family, I have an education, I have my health, I have power and beauty, I have all the things that I desire. 
And therefore, this, this rich man sort of implicitly concludes, therefore, I don't need God. That's his conclusion. I have what I need. I'm pretty happy. I'm doing fine. But what's God going to add anything to? This is an optimist. This is somebody who is relying on the security of all of these sort of things or, or sort of qualities that he has. Jesus's critique of this kind of extreme optimist is all this is going to go away. If you're building your life and your happiness on possessions like this, it is all going to go away. And we're living in a very sort of shaky time where a lot of the things that we had relied on, from our health to our sort of economic stability to maybe trust in our leaders, all these things that we had relied on that we thought were so secure that we thought we could trust are right in front of our eyes just kind of disintegrating, going away. And I don't think at all that the sort of crises that, are, that we're watching in the 20th century are causing these things to go away. I think, if anything, that this COVID and all of the, the sort of consequences that, that come from it, they're just taking away the illusions that we had that these things were ever secure in the first place. What we're doing is really seeing reality for the first time because for most of our lives, we would lied to ourselves, like this rich man. Eat, drink, be merry, don't even worry about, you know, who cares? Take your ease. We're secure, we're fine. Put your trust in these things that you have. But we're watching these things that we have disintegrate. And so Jesus goes from that to the pessimist. And the pessimist, in general, at least is a little bit more realistic. At least the pessimist doesn't sort of assume that things are just going to be always fine. But the pessimist also has some mistakes. Anxiety. Anxiety, and, and Jesus, when Jesus talks about do not be anxious, he doesn't mean don't be responsible. If you, if, if you really believe that, well, I mean, you have to sell your house and you have to quit your job, oh yeah, God's going to take, okay. He doesn't mean do all of those things. There, at the very end, he, he sort of gives a very radical, if you really, really want to follow God with all your heart, if you want to just sort of basically enter religious life and just like just trust God entirely. But that's not for everybody. For everybody, though, what does he say? Be realistic. Don't, put, don't build your life on worldly things that can go away in a moment. But don't be anxious either. Anxiety is a sort of inner disposition. And it's not the cause, but it's the effect of the same problem that the rich man had. We're not anxious because we've lost worldly things. We're anxious because we love worldly things too much, just like the rich man. And so the extreme optimist and the extreme pessimist both make the same mistake. And what's their, their problem? Their problem is they do not love God enough. They love God too little. The optimist, the, the person who has what they need and thinks that they're, okay, you have all you need. And if that's satisfactory to you, if that's it, where is God in your life? If when you're happy, if when you're having a banquet or a party, God has nothing to do with it, that means you have what you love. That's your treasure. That's what you care about. That means God is not really in your life at all. And when those things go away, which they inevitably will, you will be devastated. And you'll probably fall into this sort of severe, anxious pessimist that Jesus talks about in the second part. But it also means, if you're overly anxious, it means you love yourself too much. It's not just that you love worldly things and God too little. You also care because they, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Nowhere in any of this uh, uh, sort of inner dialogue that these people are having are other people mentioned at all. It's not that you don't care about God only. 
You also don't care about anybody else when you let anxiety eat you up, when you let anxiety sort of destroy the inner life of your heart. So the optimist doesn't love God enough because they love worldly things too much, and the pessimist also doesn't love God enough because they love worldly things so much that they let that, they let that anxiety over them ruin their day and ruin their month and year. Now let's do a litmus test. You have to, you know, what Jesus wants for us to do is to ask ourselves, okay, which one am I or where am I on the scale? Do I love God enough? And I got to tell you, it's really interesting to watch the way people interact with the church. Because the church is the place where um, we can sort of most blatantly interact with God, right? And I'm watching, and I've, I've watched this my whole life, people, guys, you come to church and you receive the body of Christ. God himself enters your heart. And if you get to experience that, and then after that, you think you get to complain about how other people dress when they come to church. You do not love God enough. If you come to church, if we weren't able to have mass for what, two and a half, three months, and now finally, thank God, we're back. And you, come, and you can receive the body of Christ and you're complaining about having to wear a mask. If you complain about anything after receiving the body of Christ, you do not love God enough. You're either a pessimist or an optimist, but you're not right. Your love of God is so small that after receiving an infinite grace, you find some tiny little thing to complain about. You don't care enough about God and you don't care enough about other people. You're self-obsessed. So what's the solution? The solution is love God more. But what does that mean? What does it mean to love God more? Well, the obvious one is St. John in his letter says, well, how can you love God but hate your brother? So first, for sure, one way to sort of snap out of anxiety, and this really works, this is very effective. I, I do this all the time, because in general, I'm kind of an anxious person. One way to sort of snap, help yourself snap out of anxiety is, let me think about what others might need right now. Let me allow other people into my life and let me care about them. And caring about others, it's almost like this magical thing. When you care about others, all of a sudden, you might feel a little bit better. Let me sort of put other people as a priority to myself. But that's not going to be quite enough. It's never going to be quite enough. What's the solution? Prayer. A life of prayer. Letting God really live and rule in your heart. And, letting, and, and that means on a daily basis, talk to him and love him and, and let him be your friend and be his friend. And love him both when things are so good that you have nothing to worry about, still turn to him and love him. And love him even when the world is burning around you so that when things are good, you can share that happiness with him. And when things are bad, it's not the end of the world because even if you don't get anything else and you get God, you win. You have everything that you need. And so as we receive the Eucharist today, remember that everything else in the world, the value of all of these other things becomes nothing and rejoice and, and love God enough to embrace Him in your heart and to not be anxious about anything else. Let us entrust our souls to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O God Almighty, we beseech and pray that you complete your grace in us and overflow your gifts through us. May your divine mercy and compassion be for the forgiveness of the sins of your people, whom you have chosen for yourself by your grace, Lord of all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever.
Christ, who was sacrificed for our salvation, commanded us to make a memorial of his death, death, burial, and resurrection, we implore you, Lord God, to accept the sacrifice from our hands. In your grace and mercies, now and forever. Amen. By your command, O Lord our God, by your command, O Lord our God, by your command, O Lord our God, these glorious mysteries are placed on the altar of forgiveness until the second coming of our Lord from heaven. To you be glory now and forever. Amen. May this sacrifice be accepted with unveiled faces and sanctified by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. That it may be for our own salvation and our everlasting life. شو حالا و لورا و لروح خودش عل مذبح خودش نه و دخورانا دو ثلت مريم ام دلها بطرس على المذبح قد شاب وعم كان ايضا صاح وسهد ذكى الله We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of all that is seen and unseen, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only Son of God, the firstborn of all creation, the eternally begotten of the Father, but was not made, true God from true God, one in being with his Father. Through him all things were ordered and made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and became man. He was conceived and was born from the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He died and was married and rose on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. We believe in one Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father and the Son as a life-giving Spirit. We believe in one Holy Catholic Apostolic Church. We confess no baptism with the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of our bodies, and life everlasting. Pray for the memory of our fathers, the patriarchs, bishops, priests, deacons, the consecrated, and all the deceased who have departed this world in true faith. For all of our fathers and mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, and all rulers, for all the prophets, apostles, all martyrs, and confessors around the world, that God who has crowned them with the glory of resurrection may grant us hope life, inheritance, and his kingdom of heaven, Barakmar. We give you thanks, O Lord, for your overflowing graces. For a while we were sinners, you made us worthy to serve the holy mysteries of the body and blood of Christ. We plead for your help to strengthen us, that we may celebrate your gifts in perfect love and true faith. We lift up glory, honor, thanksgiving, and adoration to you now and forever.
and in reverence be attentive and pray peace be with us may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever is being offered to God, the Lord of all is right and right. Peace be with us. Worthy of glory from every mouth, thanksgiving from every tongue, adoration and exaltation from all creatures is the adorable and glorious name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who created the world in His grace and its inhabitants in His mercy, redeemed humanity in His compassion and performed a great grace toward mortals. We join thousands of the heavenly who worship Your greatness, legions of holy angels, choirs of spiritual beings, servants of light and spirit, and the holy cherubim and seraphim in adoring Your holy name, saying, Bless your incarnate word who is in your likeness, the glory of your splendor and the image of your substance. He did not grasp at equality with you, but emptied himself and took the form of a servant. He left us a memorial of our salvation, these mysteries that we offer you now. For when the time came when he would suffer and approach death, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread with his holy hands, raised his eyes to God. His Almighty Father, and gave you thanks and blessed. He broke the bread, gave it to His disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be broken for you, for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. Likewise, after the supper, he took the pure cup with his holy hands, gave you thanks and blessed. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, the mystery of faith, which will be shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sin. <clears throat> Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. We believe and confess. As we have been commanded, we, your humble servants, have gathered here to celebrate the great and irrepayable mystery of redemption. For you have put on our humanity to give us life in your divinity. You exalted our lowliness, forgiven our debts, and life in our minds, and, and made our weak nature triumphant through your overflowing mercy. 
For all these graces we lift up glory, honor, thanksgiving, and adoration to you now and forever. Pray silently. Peace be with us. Lord God Almighty, accept this sacrifice which we offer you for all your blessings bestowed on Our Lady, the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin. All the just and pious fathers who have pleased you, all the apostles and prophets, martyrs and confessors, we offer also for the Holy Catholic Church around the world and for our Holy Fathers, Mar Francis, the Supreme Pontiff, the Pope of Rome, Mar Luis Rofiler Catholicos Patriarch, Mar Emmanuel, the Bishop of our Diocese, Mar Sethad, the Bishop Emeritus, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and all consecrated men and women. Lord God Almighty, accept this sacrifice for all who are in sorrow and distress, the needy and weary, the sick and afflicted, all the deceased who have departed from our midst. Lord our God, may the sacrifice be accepted for all those who stand before your holy altar. Hear their prayers, pardon their sins, and forgive their iniquities. For this country and its inhabitants, this city and those who dwell in it, Surround them with your care and protect them from all hardships. Keep them away from fear and violence and grant them your peace all their days. O Christ, peace of heaven and earth, spread your peace and serenity to the whole world and to your holy Catholic Church. Eliminate wars from the earth, make peace between nations that desire war, that we may live a peaceful and pleasant life in purity and fear of God. We also, O Lord, your humble servants who are gathered in your name and stand before you at this moment, having received <coughs> by apostolic tradition the example of your Son, as we praise and glorify, honor, and exalt. We celebrate this great holy, life-giving, and divine mystery of the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In silence and in reverence, Stand and pray that peace be with us. Nethemah, O Hachadisha, may your Holy Spirit come, O Lord, and rest on this oblation of your servant. Bless and sanctify it that it may be for the pardon of debts, the forgiveness of sins, the great hope of resurrection from the dead, and new life in the kingdom of heaven with all who have pleased you. With open hearts and unfilled faces, we thank and praise you for your marvelous providence and lift up glory in your church, redeemed by the precious blood of your Christ, now and forever. Amen. Perfuma. scent of your love. Wash us therein from the stain of sin, O good shepherd who searched for us. Found us lost, who found us who were lost, and rejoices in our return. Forgive our in intentional and unintentional faults and sins. In your grace and in your mercy. near to these glorious holy life-giving and divine mysteries unworthy though we are we draw near to these holy mysteries O Lord with true faith in your name in your mercy we break and in your compassion we sign the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The precious blood is signed with the life-giving body of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. with the forgiving blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. These glorious
wondrous mysteries have been set apart, sanctified, perfected, united, and sealed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that they may be for the forgiveness of sins, the great hope of resurrection from the dead, and new life in the kingdom of heaven for us and for the Holy Church of Christ here and everywhere, now and forever. the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Let us approach the mystery of the precious body and blood of our Savior with piety and reverence. Let us recall his passion and drawing comfort from his resurrection with a pure heart and true faith. Let us receive the gift of eternal life with great love and a humble will, participating in the mysteries of the church. With sincere prayer and contritional so sorrow, let us repent our sins imploring mercy and forgiveness from God, the Lord of all, as we forgive the faults of our brethren. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us cleanse our intentions of all divisions and conflicts. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us purify our souls of hatred and hostility. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. Let us receive the Eucharist and be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. United in mind and heart, let us share in these mysteries. Lord, forgive our sins and offenses. May these mysteries be for the resurrection of our bodies and the salvation of our souls. And everlasting life. Let us pray. Peace be with us. O Lord, forgive our sins and faults, sanctify us in your grace, and make us worthy to stand always before you with pure hearts and unfilled faces. In the confidence you have granted us in your mercy, we call upon you together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. and implore you, do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one and his host. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the authority in heaven and on earth, now and forever.
أحيانا مارني شو عم شي حات اشتم لبرحني عم كلان العالم عمي نامي
approach and participate in these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Let us all unanimously think and glorify God, who has given them glory to him for his indescribable gift. Let us pray, peace be with us. May Christ our God, King and Savior, who has made us worthy in his grace to receive his body and blood, Strengthen us to do his will in our thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. May the mysteries that we have received grant us forgiveness of our sins, the great hope of resurrection from the dead, and new life in the kingdom of heaven. With all who have pleased him by his grace and mercy, now and forever. Amen, God. us with every spiritual blessing through Jesus Christ our Lord, giving us his body and blood as a pledge of eternal life. May he bless our assembly, Amen. protect our community, Amen. and sanctify our people Amen. who have come to be renewed by the power of these glorious Holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries, may you be sealed by the living sign of the Lordly Cross and preserved from all hidden and manifest harm, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray and plead to God, the Lord of all, for all the children of the church, especially the sick and the neediest, for peace in Iraq and throughout the world, and for the intentions of our beloved deceased. Kamil Abu Khoja died in San Diego. His funeral will be this Tuesday uh, here at St. Peter's Cathedral at 11 a.m. Shabu Jibbu Musha died in Riverside. His, fa- his funeral will be uh, this Monday, tomorrow, uh, here at St. Peter's Cathedral at 11 a.m. Yusuf Oraha Hindaya died in San Diego. Firas Naim Heisha died in Michigan. Larinka D'Souza Wright died in England. Mas'ud Salim Al-Qas Maroki died in Iraq. Sabah Salim Al-Qas Maroki died in Iraq. Polis Odish Zora in memory of the 40th. Sana Shabilla Matthews in memory of the 40th. And as many of you have probably heard already, uh, this is a very joyful week for our diocese because one of our priests, Monsignor, Felix Shabi was appointed to become bishop of the Diocese of Zafo in Iraq. This is, uh, this is very good news for our diocese and for the whole Chaldean Catholic Church. We encourage everyone to please remember Monsignor Felix in your prayers so that God's grace may guide him in his new episcopacy and being shepherd of the Diocese of Zafo. May God bless you all and happy Sunday. <laughs> I stand on rock and guide my steps, apostles rock of shake and build up a solid house, hold empowered by their master, be godlessness and build the church. Oh, disciples of truth, who built up and completed the temples of the spirit, the souls of Spirit, the souls of all the